I think the Gourmand is the strongest being in all of Rain World, which is surprising coming from a game that typically features you at a spot not so far off from the bottom of the food chain. The first of five new slug cats included in the Downpour DLC, he definitely gave me a super strong first impression with the sheer number of extra abilities and interactions he has. Even the way you beat the game is different, with a list of 22 different foods needing to end up in your larger than average belly before you can make your way to the end. Starting with... Some Slime. Glowing Slime, which is helpful given the complete lack of light in the Gourmand's starting zone. An easy fix for the danger-filled darkness, and the reason I think this specific skug is so strong, is the crafting option. This not-so-little guy can see down to the atomic level. He knows what things are now, he knows what they used to be, and most importantly, he can control what they become. With the simple molecular melding of some slime and a rock, a lantern is formed to light his way. To fund his crafting obsession, however, he needs material, but that doesn't pose an issue due to the infinite abyss that lies within his stomach. According to the Law of Conservation of Matter, <clears throat> Energy or mass or matter cannot be created or destroyed. Albert Einstein. D or Julius Robert Mayer. Or potentially someone named Emily? The point is, spending a single food point allows the Gourmand to completely ignore this fundamental law of the universe and conjure into being a random item, from smoke bombs to exploding flowers to exploding... Uh, explosives. Basically, he's an unstoppable force of nature with the ability to create literally anything at will, which is just barely balanced out by the fact that carrying an entire ecosystem's worth of items in your stomach weighs you down a bit. And by a bit, I mean if he jumps like five times, he has to take a quick breather, unless you want to suffer through climbing speeds slower than a snail. Throwing a spear also exhausts you, but with the number of bombs we have, spears end up being delegated to a movement assist instead of a weapon. Oh, also contact damage, that's a thing too. So upon realizing I couldn't run more than 20 feet without almost passing out, I decided the stormy murderbird-filled memory crypts where I'd have to run for my life every 5 seconds would be a great first destination. Our newly acquired arsenal of boom rocks doesn't help as much as I wish it did, as a single hit is just as likely to blow you up as the bird. And also the bird doesn't get blown up. This zone isn't very friendly to the Gourmand's movement light mood set, but that's more than made up for by the next one which completely solves the mobility issues with a grappling hook. Now in previous runs, I sucked with this thing, but as this is my third run through the game, I've gotten used to it. A little, at least. I still flew off a few cliffs. Okay, a lot of cliffs, but it was overall a much smoother experience. I didn't even die to the Longlegs monsters a single time, despite my best attempts to sabotage myself and dive into their tentacly embrace. I never tried to blow one of these things up, which is surprising given my obsession with blowing up literally everything else, but I was a tad distracted by the Gourmand's newfound ability to create life itself. And then turn life into smoke bombs. And then to turn smoke bombs into little beehives, which I guess is also life? The point is, he cannot be stopped, and neither can I, as I found a popcorn plant that lets me vomit up as many random items as I could possibly desire. Using these bowel-produced bombs, I've managed to clear one-third of the food challenge already, and the next area has neurons flying all over the place, which gives us even more progress. Oh, also, yeah, we're in unfortunate development again, and it's just as much of a pain as it's always been. While the low gravity solves the jumping too many times makes me tired problem, it introduces the all new the walls are made of death and sadness problem that is significantly more inconvenient. I've talked about this area before in another video, but to quickly refresh anyone who's unfamiliar, the combination of zero gravity and daddy long legs is not a pleasant one, and it's very easy to find yourself rocketing into a little death patch that wasn't even on screen when you jumped. Also, you know, I'm not exactly the most used to controlling a slug cat in what is effectively space, so I don't fly where I'm trying to go as much as whatever random direction the game felt like sending me. A few hours, several screens, and one glowing angry security system later though, and I've made my way to five pebbles. As the survivor, he gives you the karma you need to beat the game, and as the hunter, he helps combat your sickness and give you more cycles. As the gourmand, he calls you fat and tells you to leave, and to tell everyone else to leave while you're at it, which was news to me as I didn't know there wasn't everyone else to tell. Unfortunately, he also said they were to the west, and the path to the west looks like this. Slightly past the nightmare that is the wall, however, we find the chimney canopy, and more importantly, the popcorn plant right by the entrance. This time, I managed to magically summon a little beacon worm thing that I'd seen before, but only now learned was able to summon vultures, so I did the only logical thing and blew one up. The vultures weren't massive fans of my fresh declaration of war on their entire species and responded with about the level of violence I expected, but after a quick echo meeting, I was safely into the next zone. And look at this zone, it's all nice, and there's a rainbow, and I definitely didn't miss anything important on screen that I'll regret later at all. No, I definitely remembered that my quest was to eat a bunch of different types of food and totally ate all of the Sky Island exclusive delicacies. I don't know why you would ever think otherwise. Okay, in my defense, the Sky Islands were a bit more of a nightmare than I was used to. It's hard to sit still and recover when you've got angry lizards chasing you. Angry telepathic lizards, apparently. These things work together to trap you and cause all sorts of problems all the time. Yep, even on my third run through this game, I still die constantly to the most basic enemy type. Well, basic might be an overstatement, there's a lot of different information on these guys, enough to fill a 40 plus minute video that I couldn't finish because it probably has spoilers, but it's enough to prove to me that these things are fairly complex and incredibly varied. 
Take, for example, the red lizards, which are horrible nightmare creatures that sprint after you at 500 miles an hour while spitting weird little needles at you. Or these chubby guys who look like saga worms, but with significantly more teeth. What I'm trying to say is that these things are really, really cool, but also really, really dangerous, and I'm gonna enjoy eliminating and eating the various species that are required for the challenge. Significantly less enjoyable, however, were the reindeer. In the Hunter video, I was singing these guys' praises, and it surprised me how the comments seemed to be filled with nothing but pure hatred for the entire species. After this run, however, know I'm firmly on your side in your war against these annoying little idiots who will not do what you want them to. Say you got the smoke bomb spore thing that they like all the way over to where they spawn, and let's also say that they actually decided to show up for once. They're still going to be an absolute pain. Getting on top of one of these is almost impossible from the front, and they love trapping you in places where their back is inaccessible. Your problems aren't over once you've gotten on top of them, though, as they might not even go in the direction you want them to. They'll just stare in the opposite direction, unmoving while the ever-present rain-enforced time limit gets lower and lower. And all of these problems get even worse when a second one shows up. I don't care who goes on top, just do anything other than try to phase directly through one another. I have places to be that are decidedly not on the back of an incompetent, misshapen blob with too many legs. Oh, and you have to do this multiple times in this one zone, because getting a single ride wasn't enough of a punishment. These things aside though, the rest of the zone was remarkably easy, and all because of the vultures. Yeah, one of them showed back up, no doubt seeking further revenge for that one time I blew their friend up, but instead of going along peacefully in their beaks like a good little piece of prey, I stabbed it with tiny pointy sticks until it died, pried off its face, and wore it as a mask. This helpful little trinket made all of the annoying telepathic lizards from earlier telepathically tell each other to run away as fast as possible, and I support this reaction entirely. It works on most of the species, including the Sago lizards I found more of in the subterranean, but it doesn't affect the most dangerous threat in this endgame zone, the centipedes. The subterranean is full of things that kill you. There are lizards flying all over the screen, drop beetles that fall from the sky, and massive fleshy leviathans that'll eat me and anything else that happens to fall into the water without a second thought. But none of these things cause nearly as many casualties as these not actually a hundred legged monsters. These things have an instantly lethal electric shock that triggers whenever its two ends touch, and unfortunately, both ends are capable of grabbing onto you, slotting you neatly into their little electrical circuit of death. They come in all sorts of sizes, and while the medium ones only take a single hit to kill, and the smaller ones aren't dangerous at all, it's the larger ones that made me want to uninstall this game from my computer and throw the monitor out the window. Yeah, their movement is fast and unrestricted by puny things like gravity, but the real problem comes when they aren't moving and just decide to sit right on top of where you want to go without a care in the world. And water, they suck in water too, because if you know anything about how water and electricity work, you can understand why crossing this room caused me so many problems. Also, the leviathan. The leviathan didn't help, but it was mostly the centipedes. The rest of the zone wasn't too bad. I took out a sago lizard with some help from some stray murder birds, ate a few more lizards for the food challenge were only 9 items away from completing, and died to more centipedes because exhaustion is a difficult mechanic to manage. Eventually, I left the area, not for good because of a food-related reason those among you who are familiar with the gourmand have been chuckling about to yourselves for this whole last section, but for now, I'm onto the shoreline. Upon getting here, I instantly lost the mask, which was incredibly disappointing, but I made up for it by devouring several different types of completely peaceful aquatic life. This area posed remarkably little threat, I don't think I died a single time on my visit here, which is a great change of pace from my previous visits as the other skugs, which involved significantly more drowning. The only things of note in this area, however, were this popcorn plant that let me do more stupid things, and looks to the moon, who had nothing to offer gameplay-wise but plenty when it came to lore. She started by mentioning the hunter, who apparently visited her not too long ago, meaning I now have this beautiful, incredibly detailed timeline of events in my head, and then she read some data off this pearl I gave her. The pearl was from somewhere else I don't remember, but the contents of the pearl revealed the secrets behind void fluid. Like, you know, what void fluid even is, and how it's the secret behind why the ground isn't in the sky yet, and also maybe potentially dissolved all the people, but eh, who knows. What I do know is that I made a mistake. You see, for the food quest, the game shows you the next recommended target for your hungry little guy, and after eating a poor innocent squid, the next target was... that one walking pantry bug. Now, I have since learned that these guys spawn in the Shaded Citadel, which is only one zone away, but at the time, I thought they only lived in the Sky Islands, to which the fastest path I knew of was the one I'd just taken over the entire duration of this video so far. M minus the last two. Oh, also, I forgot some flowers over there, and also needed to eat a telepathy lizard, so I needed to go back anyways. So, time to do everything I just did, but again! Yay! First area, Shaded Citadel, I make what was probably a bomb, but I couldn't be sure because I accidentally ate it too fast, fight two centipedes in the water, they're already dead, blow myself up again, run past more murder birds, eat another bomb, and enter the next zone. The exterior, do some more sick grappling tricks, try to body slam lizards with varying levels of success, platforming, eat an orange boy, enter the next area. Unfortunate development, die to a tentacle monster, 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 don't die to a tentacle monster, say hi to five pebbles, die to five pebbles, Wh wait, how- how do I get to the Sky Islands if I can't go through five pebbles? Uh Wow, would you look at that? We're suddenly instantly in the zone right next to the Sky Islands. Crazy how that happened. Don't ask any questions. 
I quickly grabbed that one flower I missed the first time, got knocked into a pit by a vulture, killed a flying centipede for the challenge, got knocked into a pit by a vulture, and made my way to the location of the pantry bug. With the probably a bomb in my hand and not in my stomach, I got ready to finally deal with the second to last item on my food list. Okay, apparently the weird sphere made out of explosive doesn't actually explode. That was an accident. One more try. I refuse to stop. Overkill is not a word in the Gourmand's dictionary. I will blow this bug to smithereens. There we go. This trip, that contrary to the speed I just summarized, it took nearly half of this run so far, has finally reached its end. Eating the bug revealed the final enemy I'd have to take down for this run, and it's- Oh god. It's- it's a centipede. And not just any centipede. I know what this thing has to be talking about. It's the final obstacle that I took so much time to simply walk past in my hunter run, the thing I almost thought was impossible to truly kill, the strongest centipede of them all, the king centipede. After a quick trip back through the farm arrays that I'll skip to prevent this video from getting too terribly repetitive, I arrived at my war room. A massive shelter hidden inside of a train car mere screens away from my target, it was the location I had chosen to plan my offense from. This wasn't going to be like my experience with the hunter though, I was the gourmand. I was powerful, I had explosives. A stupid centipede wouldn't be able to withstand the full fiery might of these sticky bombs. Okay, new plan! Uh, uh more explosives! Okay, evidently explosives aren't the correct option here, there are too many things to explode. How about... hmm. I've killed centipedes with the smoke bombs before, maybe it'll work on the king centipede too. Update, it did not work and I need to run. Update 2, it totally works! Just need to explode the spider thing guarding the corpse and... Okay, new game plan, exploration time. There's a weird new area that I've never seen before to the west, probably the place that Five Pebbles told us to go. Maybe it's got, I don't know, a gun or something that'll make this fight easier. Okay, exploration is unhelpful, so it's back to the war room. Hmm, there has to be something I haven't tried. I've used explosives, I've used more explosive, what's left? Uh, ooh, look, even more explosives! This is perfect! Oh, wait, nope, never mind. Okay, outside explosives are a no-go, we need more home-crafted ones. Uh, let's see, if I make a normal bomb and combine it with the weird sticky bomb, it'll make, um, uh, ooh, this looks promising. Just gotta get into the- no, back off. All I need is the- no, 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 you, don't touch me. It's just between me and the king. Let's see what this thing does. So that worked, and I'm kinda sad that I wasn't making these things the entire time. I made a healthy snack out of my greatest enemy's bones, and after struggling to unwrap myself from his deceased coils and running past a room with enemies I had neither seen before nor wanted to see again, I made it to a checkpoint and saved my progress, meaning the food challenge was finally beaten. And with that, the Gourmand campaign was pretty much over. All I had to do was go further into that one area I'd found earlier, which contained a veritable paradise, with plenty of thriving vegetation, no horrible death rain, and plenty of annoying centipedes, so actually it wasn't anything like paradise, but with the help of some jump-boosting frogs I'm not 100% sure I should have been holding during the final cutscene, I returned to my slugcat brethren who've apparently just been relaxing off in an enemy-free area of the map this whole time while I risk my neck to bring us back food. But it's fine, because they're just so sweet and adorable and- oh, they can be found in some of the campaigns now? Like, where all the things that kill you are? Um, oops, but uh, that's it for the Gourmand run, so this video is over. Hope you all enjoyed, and thanks to all the people who told me to buy this DLC. It's been amazing so far, and you can definitely expect a few more videos on the other Skugs in the future. But yeah, that's it. Bye. Oh, also, there's a Discord now that currently only has two people in it, and they're both me. Uh, join if you want to scream at me about things, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing with it, but it's there in the description. Anyways, okay, bye.